Thank you very much, Bhagyesh. It's my privilege and honor to be get introduced by such a young mind and challenging mind. And it's always a big, big uh, happiness in my mind that I have got been introduced. I have been introduced by you. Thank you very much, Bhagyesh. And I hope I will make a justice to your expectation by the end of the my session today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Uh, before I get into the details, I would like to provide my respect to Revere Dr. R.P. Parnerkar, uh, my respect to Dr. V.R. Parnerkar, whom I treat as a philosopher, economist, institutional scientist, and of course my guru. So I request your blessings to start my session today. Uh, and with due respect to all of you, and of course, thanks to Munesh Dada, uh, Lakshmikan Parnerkar, and all the team. And of course, thank you to Mr. Gujjal Singh Rajput, who is the committee chairman of this program. Um, so with due respect to all of you, uh, may I start my program with my presentation, sir, please? So I'll start sharing my screen. OK. So um, before I get into the practical aspects of uh, intuition, and intuition is a bit complex subject, I thought I should make it a little bit more easier by way of giving a pictorial story as well as giving some real life examples. Uh, and before I get into that, uh, I would like to say good evening to all my um, friends, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. Good evening to all people who are listening in India and attending this webinar. Good morning to all those people who are listening from USA or Canada or that part of the world. And of course, good afternoon to my friends in maybe in Middle East or maybe in European countries. So thank you very much for joining. And I hope all of you are keeping good health during this lockdown and you are taking care, good care of yourself and not only yourself, of course, your family as well. So with this positive thought, uh, I would like to start uh, my discussion today. And I always thought in the world there are two things which are permanent. This is my uh, philosophy, which got changed recently, but I'll come to that. So two permanent things in the world, which I thought were number one is obviously income tax, right? We all have to pay the income tax. How can you get rid of income tax? Income tax is the permanent thing in the world. We may come, people may come and people may go. Income tax will remain there. Second thing is the death. Once we are born, Obviously, there is a possibility or there is always a guarantee that we will die. And death is also a permanent thing. So two permanent things, income tax and death. But now I realize over the last two years after meeting my philosopher, my guru, that there is one more thing which is permanent in this world. And that's called intuition. And that's the intuition we are going to discuss today in a very friendly and very different way. I believe in uh, going through the slides because that's the way I have been uh, working in the corporate industry and corporate segment. I enjoy explaining the slides with some reference points. So let's go to the presentation, please. Thank you very much. So this was the great statement I heard yesterday. If you, 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 all of you were there and obviously intuition is a sovereign power of the God. This statement was made yesterday by Dr. V.R. Parnerkar, philosopher, economist, and obviously intuitional scientist. And this is a great statement means I would not imagine any other quote towards the intuition other than sovereign power. Now, this is, this has come at a very right point of time means I never thought, even though I say that I do a little bit of study of intuition and positive psychology, this never came to my mind that intuition is a sovereign power given to us. So that's a great thing. I, I, I would say a really great thing. Now, uh, okay, forget, this is just my introduction, okay. So there are decades where nothing happens. There are decades where nothing happens. And there are weeks where decades happens. This is a statement made by Lenin. I don't know when and where, but why I'm trying to bring this statement today is that you see how apt this statement is applicable to all of us today. We are all in a lockdown. We can't go out. And in last eight to 12 weeks, what has happened is more than a decade. We all know that. I mean, 
why we are talking through a media called webinar is only because of the lockdown rather as we would have been in a partner enjoying our life and all those things but we are so what i'm trying to say is in these few weeks decades have happened and we have no other option but to follow the message of the uh, almighty or of the sovereign power which is given to us that hello take care do something different something like that so what are we going to do today so this is a sort of synopsis so what we'll try to cover today i think 60 minutes enough for me or maybe another 5 10 minutes here and there we'll see uh, what is introduction current situation this lockdown and economy little bit we'll not go too much into that then we'll we'll go into intuition science what's the concept and what's the meaning what is the perception and expression of intuition what are the types and examples of intuition what is the human mind conscious mind and unconscious mind very important aspect to understand intuition then we'll go into theory of mind little bit more we so we are going deeper and deeper and deeper theory of mind what we call as a system one thinking and system two thinking and where does the intuition falls in this so that also we'll try to see and then we will go to type in we'll go to a terminology called heuristics we will see what are the types of heuristics what's the relationship between heuristics and intuition and then obviously at the end we will try to see what are the benefits of intuition practicing the intuition and what is a take away or what can i take home today after speaking after hearing to sunil deshmukh okay so current situation i don't want to spend too much time but what i'm trying to say is all of us are in a lockdown which is difficult i know difficult for me as well i am person who believe talking in front of 500 people or 200 people feel the connection feel the wavelength but now i have to see the camera screen or the you know, computer screen and speak to you but it's fine so today we are in a vuka world when i say vuka world vuka means volatile uncertain complicated and ambiguous world in this ambiguous world the corona virus has added one more complication one more ambiguity one more problem to everyone and world does not know what is the solution to this problem that's a huge huge issue right during such time we need the people who are leaders during the war time and leaders during the peace time you know and during the current period even though you may think we are in a peaceful phase of the life as far as leadership is concerned this is a war time this is a war time leadership so lockdown is a war time leadership it's not a peace time leadership after the lockdown is over and everything becomes normal then becomes the peace time leadership we are all working from home which is a norm, new normal now i am giving this webinar from my home you are listening from your home work life imbalance we were complaining i don't get time to go spend time with my family now it's a reverse problem i get too much time to spend with my family i don't know how to handle my family right it's a new concept another very important aspect i just touch upon which is the psychological safety when i say psychological safety is when we say hand sanitization we say wash your hands 20 seconds and we see advertisements and all those things but has anyone thought that during this time we need to also sanitize our mind this is the time where most of the people will get impacted psychologically mentally so why no one is talking about this thing loneliness is a huge problem worldwide and being a human being we are social animal we need people around us we need friends families relatives move around that's not happening so there is a very high possibility we need a psychological safety and that's why I, that's why i have used my term called mind sanitization please don't take it otherwise but basically what i'm trying to say is as you wash your hands you also need to clean your thought system also need to clean your mind okay so what are the effects in general of uh, lockdown happening is one is obviously i am a believer that <clears throat> this pandemic is going to turn into an endemic now when i when i use the term endemic endemic doesn't mean it's going to end endemic means that this virus is likely likely to remain for much longer time maybe another 50 years 100 years we don't know and we need to find out ways and means how are we going to deal with during this pandemic as far as our life is concerned other big problem infodemic when i say infodemic there is so much information coming to all of us through media tv whatsapp emails youtube it means you name it too much information is confusing all of us and the biggest problem is what information we should take inside and what information we should not take inside so what information which is a fake and which is a real 
which is trusted in information which is not trusted information so very very important area and i would request all of you to be careful as far as checking in the information is concerned of course there will be economic impact uh, i don't want to dwell upon too much on the economics but definitely economy is going to go through cycles slow down and we all will be affected so i always i am suggesting my young students or my people who come and talk to me is find out what is your second profession what is your second profession what else you can do to earn the money other than your existing job if at all the existing job is likely to lose or you get get out of that second thing is don't forget what is your passion your passion will keep you activated all the time passion may not give you money all the time but passion will give you purpose of life to live the life so please find out what is your passion work towards your passion this is a time for you to work towards your passion and enjoy the passion maybe it's a forced time but still why not last in this slide i would like to cover is meditation spend quality time with yourself talk to yourself speak to your inner voice which is very very important and eventually this will lead you and me to a topic of our interest called intuition right and that's where i will get into the intuition now you know albert einstein all of us know albert einstein is no need to say who is he he made a statement or i would say most of the philosophers and scientists have always opined that intuition is the ultimate thing and what albert einstein says that intuitive mind is a sacred gift and the rational mind is a faithful servant he is using using the word sacred gift so divine so very right and we have created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift which is given to us by god which is a intuition so that is what even albert einstein has also uh, said about this so let us get into the little bit more deeper into intuition i am slowly slowly taking you inside the chakra view of intuition uh, with some different information different aspects of the practical life also i will tell you and this is a statement i would like to make which my all lawyer friends you would hear will definitely like and they will understand those who have studied the law they were taught in the first year of the law it's called this is a latin maxim you know legal principles came from italian latin so this maxim or this um, um, code says that ignorantia juris non excusat what does it mean it means ignorance of law is not excusable means you cannot say i don't know the law i committed a murder i don't know what is the punishment what is the law i made a fraud no 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 law is for everyone and every citizen is supposed to know the law that's called ignorantia juris non excusat i stretch this analogy to our beloved topic of intuition and i said that ignorantia intuitio non excusa ignorance of intuitive intuition cannot be excused we all have that we are all born with intuition how can we say that i don't know my intuition you have to use intuition only thing is someone need to make you aware and who is that someone i don't know it might be me it might be you yourself it might be your wife it might be your friend or it might be the circumstances under which you are going through so intuition cannot be excused that is my statement so let's go into what's the meaning of intuition okay very simple uh, in the term intuition came from latin uh, in original latin it was called intuere in the late latin it was called intuitio and then in english it became intuition right that's the how word came in so what is intuition we use this word without many time without knowing what is the meaning of this word and that's why i'm going into the specifics of this word so intuition is an ability to understand something instinctively see this is very important instinctively without a need for conscious reasoning without a need for conscious reasoning so intuition comes instinctively it is not like that you are thinking for half an hour and then you are getting intuition let us do like no 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 it just happens it's beyond your control it is automatic it is quick it's speedy it's fast so that is intuition 
and that is what we all have and we got exposed to that many times but we don't realize that it is my intuition what is science because the topic given to me was intuition science i am not a scientist and i don't want to be a scientist but let's define what is science so science is a study of nature and behavior of natural things and the knowledge that we obtain about them so that is science right it means you know newton saw the apple falling so he was observing he saw the natural thing and he created a science out of it we all follow that so natural science is basically the thing which we create a rules of the based on observations of the physical world or natural world and then we prove in the form of a formula or a, a hypothesis so intuition science is applying the scientific principles of observation particularly observation to intuition and that's all intuition science i would say would be so let us get into little bit more detail about the perception of intuition what is the perception of intuition now when i use the word perception what is perception it's very important that a perception is ability to see ability to see ability to hear ability to become aware of something through various senses see we are all born with five senses you know that right so we use these senses in order to get perception of what's happening around that's perception so what is a perception about intuition the first perception of intuition is that it's a flash memory it just comes to me instinctively or suddenly something like like a electricity right like a lightning something flashes to my mind is that perception yes it is a perception is that perception of intuition i don't know only if you have studied intuition then only you will know it's intuition or not otherwise you'll say some wild thought came to my mind i forget it's a different level of computing different level of thinking intuition is a digested knowledge settled in my system you know digestion right you know very well so intuition is a digested knowledge settled in my system now we will we'll decide we we'll define what is system as we go into detail detail and all this intuition brings each to my life that's how so this is how people see the perception of intuition so let's get into for example thought flash or i gave an example here is winning a lottery ticket is not intuition someone says that i won a lottery ticket because i had an intuition i am going to win the lottery it's not intuition right so now let us go further down into intuition and let us see what is intuition expressions how do we express the intuition now what is expression expression is an action of making known one's thoughts or feeling so what we think what we feel if you make it known to someone else to the society at large to my family to my friends whoever is there my company my staff that's called expression right so how do you how do we express intuition so we express intuition by way of hunch we may say it's a hunch we may say i'm getting a feeling in my bones right some people may say oh i have a gut feeling i think it's like this something like this i have a gut feeling some people may say i get an inkling you know i get an inkling or someone may say that it's a impulse it just comes to me like uh, i was someone walking on the roads and sees a nice shop and he goes and buys a particular thing it's a impulse buy he has not decided to buy something when he left the home but he goes and buys that's impulse same happens with the intuition it comes to your mind suddenly problem is how do you identify is it a intuition or it is a just thought crossing your mind that's the beauty of intuition and that's where you need a study of intuition to realize what is right and what is wrong further expressions of intuition we'll see someone says it as a sixth sense you know it's very commonly we use <clears throat> then some people say intuition is innate when you say innate means you are born with it comes to you automatically when you are born with there are only two things in the world uh, psychologists have proved this in the world that when a human being is born he is born with two innate things one is called fear of falling when we are born we are always fearful of falling down number one and number two fear of sound so when a human being is born it is proved by psychologists not by me 
the two things we are fearful of sound and falling down and then there are so many other things but i would say that we are also born with intuition but problem is we come to know about our own intuition much later in the life maybe when you get into a bad incidence or when you get to a right philosopher or mentor to tell you what is there and what is not there or maybe by accident it's possible in intuition is also expressed as uh, instinctual it's also expressed as clairvoyance it's also expressed as esp extra sensory perception now when you say esp there are so many things i don't want to go into the negative side of the intuition people make misuse of the intuition i don't want to get into that but a classic example of esp is like telepathy right we say i was thinking of someone and he calls me on the phone that's called telepathy that's falls under esp also called precognition so there are different ways of divination clairvoyance unpremeditated mind and so many things are the basically way uh, intuition is expressed let us get further into how this expression which we make gets converted into interaction right how this get converted into interaction now we are going a step further into understanding the intuition and how it works so how does human beings interact you know what is interaction i, mean, I should not define you for interaction but we all survive based on interaction what i am doing right now with you is interaction i am talking to you so my sense of talking is being used to talk with you or to interact with you or to converse with you that's called interaction so we have various senses and we use these senses for interaction and being a social animal human beings you cannot live without interaction if you remember there is a concept called solitary confinement in jurisprudence or in legal system why they used to give a solitary confinement right solitary confinement was so difficult because any of your senses we you were not able to use that and then you will come under pressure or it's treated as very bad so that is like a one of so what are our senses how do we interact and sense people or sense society at large we all know we have five known senses touch we touch something and we feel something right by touching someone's hand you can recognize whether he is your son or he is your wife even though your eyes were blindfolded yes or no think right so you can you can hearing we can hear right you can hear good things bad things but you can hear vision we can see right vision is very important another sense we can smell we lot of people love the smell of the food right so smell is another sense test again when you eat the food your identity of the food is based on the test right so these are the five senses known to all of us and most of us 99.9% people are born with these five senses all is exceptions i'm sorry for that but yeah generalization is wrong. but there is one sense which we are all missing and which is what we are going to study today or we are going to experience a little bit more detailed manner today it's called intuition and that is why intuition is called sixth sense five senses known to you you are using day in day out left and right but sixth sense which is intuition you are not using or you are using unknowingly you are using it you are using it unknowingly maybe for your good or maybe for your bad you don't know that because you are using it unknowingly and obviously with whom you interact a person interacts with the environment right today our biggest problem is we cannot interact with the environment environment is interacting with us the corona virus so called infectious disease is showing us how it can interact with us right so when we say we interact with environment means external world mountains rivers whatever person person to person we interact with brother sister father mother whatever objects our biggest problem today is we love to interact with objects more than the people this thing called mobile phone which is an object right we spend more time with this object than anyone else in today's world that's also interaction right so you are talking to that mobile phone as if it is more important than maybe your wife your friend your husband sometimes even beyond 
So that's interaction and sensing of interaction. Okay. Now let's go further down uh, on what is the difference between sensing and intuition. I'm very sorry. I'm drilling down a little bit one by one so that you feel it comfortable to understand. So we know what is sensing, five senses, how we sense, what comes out of sense. Now, how is intuition and what is comparison? So we go to that now. So sensing versus intuition. So when we say I am sensing something, means what? A sensing is practical, right? Down to earth, it's concrete. You can say that when you eat gulab jamun, it's sweet, right? Very concrete. You cannot say gulab jamun, oh, neither sweet nor mm, bland, but it is in between. No, no, no. You say yes or no, right? That's concrete. Focused on present or past. Your sensing is always on present or past. You cannot sense the future, right? By touching a product, you cannot say what will happen in future for that. Sensing is always in present tense and past tense. And it's detail oriented. You can classify, you can get into details, you can do a lot of reasoning and all those things. And it's literal. Whereas now if you go to intuition, why I'm comparing is because these two things are extremely different to interpret and understand. So when you go to intuition, intuition is visionary. When you say visionary means it's future oriented, it's futuristic. Intuition is imaginative. Intuition is conceptual. Intu intuition is abstract. So this is very important thing. Intuition is abstract. You may not be able to specifically drill down every single point in an intuition. You have to understand it. You have to imagine it. You have to feel it. So you get a gut. You have to analyze that gut and understand it is helpful, not helpful, and all those So intuition is abstract. Intuition is focused on meaning. You have to understand it. It will give you a hint. It will not give you the complete message. And it is the reading between the lines. You have to understand and you have to interpret. Oh, I today I thought something like, what does that mean? So you have to do, you have to do the analysis. So thought will pass through your mind. But how to interpret that thought? is in your hand, not in someone else's hand. Right? So in this sensing and uh, intuition, I just want to a little bit uh, dwell upon more. So <clears throat> in our industry, in corporate world, when we recruit the people at the corporate level, leadership level, manager level and above, we make use of sensing and intuition. And there is a very famous psychometric testing called uh, MBTI. I may have some friends on this call who understand human resource and MBTI. So MBTI is basically Myers-Briggs type indicator. So Myers and Briggs are the name of two ladies, a mother and daughter, psychologist, American psychologist, I think yes, American psychologist. So they created this tool to test the human personalities for the purpose of selecting into the corporate world. And in there, so they created 16 personality types. And in this 16 personality types, they classified how people take the decisions. And those decisions were further broken down into decisions based on sensing and decisions based on intuition. And if the decision, a person takes a decision based on intuition, he is very likely to get into a leadership position or a decision making position or a higher ups. So if you have got time, please go on Google search, go put MBTI, Myers Briggs uh, type of indicators. There's a free testing available. You can do it yourself. You will know what type of personality you are out of those 16 personality. And they classify the personality. S means sensing. S stands for sensing. And N stands for intuition. I have used this extensively in my past life when I was in a corporate world as a CEO or a managing director. And it's a very effective tool for making use of. So now we know a little bit of intuition. We know a little bit of theory. We know a little bit of sensing. We know a little bit of expression, right? Let's see some of the examples of intuition. So you can relate it. What I'm talking, does it make sense to you or not? Right? Examples is always a realistic and practical way of explaining any topic for anyone, right? So what are the examples? So intuition examples, I would just say that, for example, let's take the first example. It is a real example. This is not a 
hypothetical example and i presume the guy uh, the person i'm going to tell the story is attending this program uh, today uh, this webinar so what happened is two years back i went to denmark for a holiday and while going to denmark i asked a friend of mine in singapore that i'm going to copenhagen do you know anyone in copenhagen just for the sake of you know, knowing someone you know you always want someone to be known and like that so my friend in singapore gave me the name and number of this person who lives in who used to live in copenhagen at that point of time so i go to copenhagen i land in copenhagen second day morning i call this person and i say hello i'm so and so and i came from singapore and how are you and your friend gave me your number and can we meet now this guy at that point of time was stunned i'll tell you why because he got his phd award on the same day our guy he's our person his name is prasad uh, he must be listening to this conversation i assume so 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 prasad told me sunil uh, i got a my phd award and it's happening tomorrow is my convocation i was very worried that my family parents were not able to come and attend my convocation program because of cold distance whatever whatever it is and you have come to me and i had a intuition that someone is coming someone will come for me now imagine this it was not anywhere in my mind means i would never think and he happened to be from nanded again look at the connection right so this is intuition so he had a intuition that someone will be there not his brother father sister mother but someone so for me he started treating me like his elder person you know or he is asking me i want to touch my feet and all those thing but imagine the intuitive feeling so this is a classic and this is a real example and this is not cooked up example there are many such examples in your life when we talk to someone we say i read your mind right we very nicely say that i read your mind means what you know what the other person is thinking in advance before he speaks so there is a wavelength matching of your mind and his mind that's intuition it's not easy it comes with a lot of experience not every time it happens right okay by experience when you live with your wife you know what she is going to cook right that's not intuition don't treat that as intuition that's experience okay then another classic example of intuition is while buying a house or a property or a car you do not use the analytical information available with you you go by your gut you tell me how many of you have purchased the house or purchased the car and did a technical analysis and this analysis but when you go there you have decided to buy a white color car but when you go there you like the red color car and you come buy a red color car and come here. no analytical decision work here nothing when you buy a house you exactly do the same thing this is a inbuilt intuition certain aspects in our life we just rely on intuition i am not saying you will be always right on that please please note this but chances are there you might be right most of the time also we use intuition unknowingly in such matters think of someone and doorbell rings or think of someone and his phone comes intuition right this happens very common when this is the most common form of intuition it happens many time we go to eat something in a restaurant or hotel or we live and we don't eat there for some reason we say no something is wrong here right a mother feeling child is unwell or child is hungry it's the classic example of intuition why a mother a son or a daughter is staying say 3000 miles away or whatever it is sitting in india sitting in wherever she knows that there is something wrong with my son today let me talk to him how does this happen no one no scientist has been able to lay down the process how this happens but it happens and this thing is almost 99% time right a mother never makes a mistake in identifying whether the son is unwell or daughter is unwell or hungry or not always on top 9 months in the womb of mother i don't know what's the connection another very interesting thing is of intuition which i, I can quote an example is a person signaling you his or her death in advance right? very commonly happens it happened with me 3 years back i lost my mom and she gave clear signals uh, to us that she is going to die and be prepared for this very clear and she was not serious she was not in hospital like a very on ventilator nothing like that but she gave enough signals so intuition but this type of intuition is at a different level 
you will not see this happens very common okay so these are intuition examples in our personal life let's go to intuition examples in the corporate life or social life i hope i am not going too fast i hope my sound clarity is very good i hope you are able to grasp what i am telling and uh, it's i hope it's interesting to you i'll try to make it more interesting to you in the next slide or these examples so in social life we a lot of time get exposed to intuition or we have to use intuition as a ceo or as a leadership material in past in my life i have used intuition in the decision making many a times i can tell you two very nice stories here uh, one is with my personal life and one is known to everyone in the world you know the hudson river plane landing case right in the year 2009 i think uh, us airlines uh, aircraft uh, met with an accident i think it was a bird hit and uh, yeah it was on 15th of january 2009 and this aircraft needed to land immediately otherwise the engine was not working obviously so the pilot of the aircraft intuitively decided to land the aircraft on a river or in a river it has never happened in the past in the life of <clears throat> i'm sorry airlines industry that intentionally aircraft is landed on the water never happened so this guy he is a hero obviously no doubt about that he landed this aircraft on the water in the hudson river the temperature of water at that point of time was below sub zero it was sub zero it was a pure winter landed the aircraft he knew the water temperature is so low that people may die even getting into the water but he landed the aircraft 155 lives were saved every single person in that aircraft survived because of that decision which was taken intuitively by the pilot what do you think about this now this type of intuition is not so easy you need a lot of experience you need a lot of expertise this guy was a pilot for more than two and a half decades three decades so three decades experience sitting in his brain digested knowledge he made a calculation that i know i am we are all going to die i can't land on a plain surface because my engine is not there one engine is not working let's take a chance on the water obviously he would have made some calculation in life so maybe instead of 155 people dying on the road accident on a landing on the road maybe another 50% people will survive on the water that would have been his some calculation some intuition and this decision is instinctive he had less than 2 minutes to take a decision i am saying 2 minutes maybe it's even lower than that so this is a intuition in a corporate life or social life or a business life. very classic this is this example is being taught in all the schools of psychology all the schools of decision making you name anywhere and this guy is obviously become a hero and he's known worldwide and in us they felicitated him and gave him prize and all that another example i touch upon another before go to other another example you know in a combat zone when there is a war happening and there is a combat zone this is written in british navy seal and american seals manual that if a soldier thinks there is a danger ahead the commander of the that squadron need to listen to the soldier even though technologically he may have the proof that there is no danger ahead but if a soldier on the ground says that there is a danger ahead he has to and this is written down as a policy manual so this is again the importance given to intuition in the situation of danger difficult time your intuition works very fast very quickly and favorably many a time let's take another real estate example which i use in my life and i would like to quote it very it's very interesting so i used to work for a company in singapore as a managing director and we were going to myanmar burma bangladesh myanmar and we were to uh, buy a warehouse a huge warehouse 15000 square feet for storing our products and all that so i sent my team they came due diligence everything happened and they said sir this warehouse is perfect and we have to buy this and we need immediately buy so i said okay let me come and have a look at it so i traveled to yangon we used to call rangoon now they call yangon the capital city of uh, well, technically now it's not a capital city uh, capital city of uh, burma is called nepido the new capital city but yangon rangoon used to be the old capital so i go to rangoon or i go to yangon we visit the site so when you go to the site 
I saw in the vicinity of that industrial area, every single factory or every single warehouse had an asbestos roof. You understand asbestos roof, right? We all had asbestos tins and asbestos roofs in our life, right? But you know, now uh, worldwide it is proved that asbestos is dangerous to the human health and you are not allowed to use an office. So, so when we went, I see the factory and that warehouse and they were insisting me, sir, everything is okay, let's go and give a clearance, we need to close this. So I asked the owner of the warehouse who was selling me the product that does your warehouse has got an asbestos sheets on the roof or is it something or is it a concrete or because he has painted and made it false ceiling so nicely you are not able to see from the bottom. This guy saying is a no no sir everything is clean no issues and this is this and this is not asbestos this is tin and this is mixture and new material all those things were happening. So he was insisting then I realized that my intuitive mind was telling me there is something wrong here. I could see on the vicinity every single warehouse was having an asbestos sheet. How come this guy is saying he is not having asbestos sheet? So I told my project manager, I said, how do we find? He said, no, sir, there is no steps to go ahead. We can't go and find it out. And he was saying, no, sir, I can guarantee you I am a local person. We must buy this property. So I said, okay, I, I am inclined to do one more uh, practical solution. If that works, I will buy this warehouse for my company. So imagine what I did. So I told my project manager, he can't go up. He doesn't prove any papers to show what's happening. So I told project manager, go outside, pick up a big stone, throw that stone on the warehouse roof. Right? Throw that stone on the roof of the warehouse with as much speed and as much height you can get from. So he said, sir, this is nonsense. What are you telling me to do something like this? This is not correct, sir. No, he was convincing me. I don't know, you just do that. So he goes and does that. And obviously I hear the sound, right? Based on the sound created by a stone falling on asbestos sheet, obviously I concluded that it is asbestos sheet because the sound coming from any other surface vis-a-vis -vis the sound coming generating from asbestos is always different. And I told my project manager that we are not going to buy this property because there are asbestos sheet. No, I'm not trying to say that I did a smart thing. What I'm trying to tell you is my intuitive mind I would have thrown, thrown the stone in my life 40 years ago when I was living in Mandir and playing with someone and sound whenever generated. You know, we play like that, we used to play like that. But that knowledge remained in my unconscious mind for 40 years and I applied that today or at that point of time. So that is intuition. So this is a simple classic examination. All these big people like your Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, all every single person when they go to the new market, they use intuition. They use intuition. Bill Gates, Bill Gates and Steve Jobs has openly agreed in the public forum that they have used intuition to launch the new product. Also, when we are in a difficult situation, floods, earthquake, you know, all this type of problem, we use intuition and it works normally very well. In case of danger, we are very prone to go towards our intuition. So let us go to the next area. Uh, now we know a little bit more about intuition. What are the types of intuition? How do we classify intuition into types of intuition? So there are three types of intuition. Directional intuition, social intuition, and informational intuition. This is a general classification. We have already seen the examples beforehand. So a directional intuition gives you a direct or creates a, uh, what you can say, way forward for you or a roadmap for you. So like I said, when you hire a person, right? You may hire the best person or you, what happens is normally when you select a person for a job, you may not select the best person for that job. What happens is we always are this feeling, this guy is too smart. Everything he answers, everything well, his communication is good, his personality is good, everything is good, but something is missing. So you don't select that person. So that is a direction given to you by your mind. Same thing, you enter in the new market, you use the direction. So this is a directional intuition, particularly when you launch a product, when you go into new territory, new market, you use this direction. So getting a direction, whether we should do that or not, that's what is direction. Social intuition, again, uh, this is very commonly used by all of us unknowingly many times when we are sitting in a meeting or when we are doing a presentation or when we are sitting in a group of people, we don't like some people or we get a feeling that someone is not speaking truth to you or someone is a little bit smarter to you. 
and these things you identify unknowingly and that's called social intuition and social social intuition is very uh, uh, commonly used by sales people understanding the customer or in the meetings and conferences you know that this guy is going to ask me a different question his intention is not good and all those stuff so that is called uh, social intuition informational intuition is a basically based on lot of data and analysis over a period of time you generate your ability to create a decision making pattern which is intuition so particularly data scientists the stock market people accountants like when i used to be a finance guy i used to have my numbers on top of my mind and there was no need for me to remember and read through every time the balance sheet and profit and loss i know by experience what's going to happen you know so that is more of a uh, informational intuition and this is typically nowadays used by data scientists artificial intelligence and deep learning all these people are using the uh, informational intuition very commonly used by the ceos the leadership people in their life so we have seen more or less uh, i would say a lot of information about the intuition now let's get into some another technicalities or technical example of intuition which is more pictorial i will not get into too much technicality so artificial network we we are all talking to each other today through a network a webinar zoom platform cloud computing wifi internet 5g 10g everything is you know right so this is artificial network which is created by human being for the convenience and that's why we are able to talk to each other on this webinar then you have a natural network right now when i say natural network means your mind has got ability to connect naturally with other people and understand what is happening on the side like mother feeling son is not well in america or i am sitting here and i am thinking oh, what rohit is thinking about he has to do a concluding remarks what is going in his mind i know this just giving example don't don't say like that but i am not that advanced but what happens is by experience you come to know lot of things so this is a natural network means this showing this picture you immediately capture the figures you know signal you know jira you know there is a satellite you know there is a chess board there is a uh, camera so what i'm saying is these things even though i tell you or not tell you just by seeing you are grasping them that's intuition because in your digested memory there is a connection to all these things i did not tell you though there is a by the way there is a tower there or there is a wifi sign there or there is a people having lunch together no it happens automatically so this is our natural network now what happens or what is happening today or in current scenario is we have come out with a concept called neural network right so neural networks are basically the networks used by the people in artificial intelligence yesterday also there was a reference made to artificial intelligence uh, by um, uh, dr v r parnekar and what i am trying to say here is basically artificial intelligence based programs are inspired based on human intelligence and human network so you know we in our brain you have neurons and neurons pass through electrical current and they pass the communication from one neuron to another neuron and there are uh, we will come to that there are next slides so what i am saying the internal communication mechanism of our brain and our mind it's so advanced that the people in artificial intelligence are using the same analogy same process to create the neural networks and this is what this picture is the same thing this is how artificial intelligence people use this platforms fortunately both my sons are in artificial intelligence and data sciences so of course they think i don't understand any of these things even the one boy asked me what right you have to make a presentation on this topic i said thank you very much so uh, but what i'm trying to say is artificial intelligence uses the natural network of human being and they are copying it's inspired and they may be uh, they may go to the next level of this we don't know so these neural networks are consolidating using the good things in our natural network neurons how neurons work with each other and all those things another very interesting thing in human network is uh, again i'm using the legal terminology i'm very sorry for that this is a terminology in the contract act called consensus ad idem consensus ad idem is a term what does it mean is you agree with each other in a similar sense right meeting of the minds that's the consensus ad idem so in our mind our brain there is always a consensus ad idem when we work towards the intuition with someone else 
you connect with the user oh my wavelength with you works perfectly right that's the terminology we use very often so that's intuition or that's consensus so that is also another area of this let's get into some other more some more details of intuition what are the facts means about intuition just have a glass of water so what are the facts about intuition so intuition is a human ability to predict possibilities and very important is to predict possibilities instantaneously not like wait for 10 days and then predict what is going to happen no at that point of time at that moment instinctively what do you think what is likely to happen in future and when i say without reason means without thinking it means you don't have time to think and do a calculation and you have to take a decision and we'll come to that later on how the decision is being taken what are the uh, rationality of a decision we'll come to that intuition can be achieved by self realization because you only can know your intuition right someone else will not know your intuition first you have to speak to yourself so self realization dedication it's not easy to understand and uh, speak to your mind all the time there are very few instances when you can speak to your mind and understand intuition and of course the very important is meditation meditation is a step towards going towards intuition i am not guaranteeing this but a lot of people believe that if you are able to silent your mind you can speak to your inner mind and that will help you to get into meditation and obviously intuition being intuitive is the proof that your soul is more connected with a higher power this is again assumptions and beliefs intuition is another way that your senses are heightened right means your threshold of thinking goes up a level up Right, that's also uh, facts of intuition. Myths about intuition. What are what is wrong thinking about intuition? Is it's a magical ability? No, no. Intuition is not magic. Please try to understand this, and this is very clearly uh, known and told by Dr. V. R. Panekar many times to many people, including me. Intuition is not a magic. It's not a chamatka. Right. It doesn't come just by only mantras and shlokas. Right? Second very important thing is. it is a mysterious process and should be left to the religious people no intuition is for everyone it's not mysterious of course you have to understand your own mind and speak to your own mind but it's not only religious people every single person has its innate ability you're born with intuition you should know how to use the intuition so only religious people can uh, practice the intuition and all those things it's not true Okay. but of course religious people who have studied at a very high level who have practiced obviously they will have next level of intuition which you and me may not have but that doesn't mean uh, study practice is very very important now let us get into the very interesting topic called mind right so what i am trying to do is we are started from the top of our intuition we are going down the funnel and now we are going to mind then we will go into brain and all those things because these are all related things uh uh mr rohit i hope i am okay on the time i will need another maybe 25 minutes is okay half an hour i yes i okay. i i i think okay i'll try to cover up in that no problem yeah. so your mind uh, is another animal which is very interesting animal uh, i always love uh, studying the mind and topics on mind really so there is a guy called sigmund freud so sigmund freud is a great psychologist and he was little bit uh, not liked by many people because he come out with some theories called psychoanalysis which were very against the human thought process and all those things but they were very realistic so sigmund freud said that every human being has got three types of mind and that theory it became very popular and now almost every single psychologist in the world sort of believes that yes human mind has got three types of mind so one mind is called the uh, the pre conscious or subconscious mind so this is a stage which is called this mind consists of anything that could potentially be brought into the conscious mind so this is like you are floating on the water you are neither getting into deep waters nor you are totally on the top of the water but you are just at the level of water so you are floating you are, means you can immediately come up so that is called pre conscious mind or subconscious mind the conscious mind again is the most important thing is the conscious mind contains all thoughts memories feelings wishes what we have at any given point of time now i am talking to you i am conscious and thoughts in my mind are conscious of talking only about the 
intuition topic and nothing else. So that is conscious mind. Conscious mind thinks about rationality, what is right and what is wrong, what are moral values. That's the reasoning, right? that's the human nature. We define everything. The rationality of our mind. It includes memory. Obviously, conscious mind includes memory, but conscious mind also includes memory, which is sitting in your pre-conscious mind and which you can retrieve quickly. See, this is a very important thing because you cannot keep everything at the top level all the time. So there are compartments in your brain or in your mind. So top level, mid level, bottom level. But the mid level, it should be in a such a way that you can quickly take it out. So the thing which we need always, we keep it in the top drawer, right? Something like that. So that is the conscious mind. Then you have an unconscious mind. Now, unconscious mind is the dangerous area as far as Sigmund Freud is concerned. He says that un unconscious mind is a reservoir of feelings, thoughts, urges, memories outside our conscious mind, which may include pain areas, right? which may include anxiety, which may include conflict, aggression, the bad thing happened to you in your life when you are young or when you are growing up as a child. Sigmund Freud says that a human mind gets affected maximum between the age group of one to six. So they said, what are things going into your unconscious mind? They all happen say, up to age of six. And if anything is happening, good or bad, it all goes there. That's Sigmund Freud. So uh, this is a, and our intuition, our area of interest, intuition sits inside the unconscious mind. Why are we seeing all these things? Because of that. Intuition sits into the unconscious mind, obviously. And that's why it takes time to come out. It doesn't come out so easily every time. Now, uh, there is a, okay, next level to the intuition, uh, to the mind theory of mind by Sigmund Freud. The next concept is called a mental iceberg. So what I say that your mind is like an iceberg. You know what is an iceberg? Iceberg is a, uh, what you can say is, in the water you can see an ice on the top, that is called tip of iceberg, but the tip is a small portion of iceberg. Below or underwater, there is a huge and big portion of the ice, right? That's the bottom of the iceberg. So what Freud says that your mind is like an iceberg. So what is on your top level of iceberg, is your conscious level, is a, are your thoughts and perceptions. Then you go below that water level, which is, I was saying a floating level, just below like maybe one feet below the water or whatever, half meter below the water, which is your subconscious mind where your memories or stored knowledge can come out very easily. And the last part, as you go more deeper and deeper and deeper, you will have a lot of things. So your mind works on this philosophy. So this is a very nice metaphor used by psychologists to describe the theory of mind, conscious mind, pre-conscious mind or un subconscious mind and unconscious mind. Intuition sits in unconscious mind. Let's move further and see what is next. So there is a concept called Freudian slip. I don't know how many of you know this, but we say slip of tongue, right? Very commonly we say, oh, there was a slip of tongue. A classic example given here is, I will read that example is, a man who accidentally uses former girlfriend's name while referring to a current girlfriend. Very dangerous, right? Very dangerous. Not good. But this happens. Why? Because your unconscious mind and conscious mind clash with each other. And that's why uh, Freud has used the word uh, unconscious mind is largely inaccessible. The contents can sometimes bubble up unexpectedly such as dreams or sleep of time. So it can be, we go through sleep of tongue every day, at least once. Right? Every single person, human, you cannot say that I will never have sleep of time. It just happens, right? And the internal part of that exerts influence on your thinking process. And that is called sleep of tongue, and which is very common way. So why I'm trying to say that sleep of tongue is also, I would say, some part of intuition. Some part of intuition in a very stretched manner. What I'm trying to say that your unconscious mind is hitting your conscious mind and it's uh, conflicting. And when you are in conflict, you utter the wrong words and that's called Freudian slip. Two sons name, it happens with me. I mean, I should not tell this in a public gathering like this, but I have two boys, their names are so similar. Many times by confusing, I call one boy with the other name. Freudian slip, I can't help it. Even though I would say that, I have studied psychology and I understand, but it happens with everything. 
So that's a Freudian slip. Again, a very interesting concept. Let's go to the theory of mind now. So again, we are a little bit going into the deeper and deeper of the mind, and we'll go to the brain also. So what is a mind now? So mind is a categorization machine. Please remember, we are calling it as a machine. Right? Mind is a categorization machine. It's busy all the time, even though when you are sleeping, your mind is working. 24 by 7, 365 days, as long as you live, your mind is working. No lockdown effect. No um, 60 days lockdown, lockdown 1, 2, 3, 4, nothing happens. It's always there. Busy all the time, always thinking. Mind takes voluminous complex data, just incoming. Anedo, coming, 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 coming. Without your knowledge, it comes in. Then what it does, this complex data, it tries to simplify and structure to settle down into your mind. First, take inside, then segregate, then classify, then keep it inside. And why we do all these things to make sense of the world? To make sense, see, why we do it? The classic example I have given here is the mind's most important capability is at a glance to tell you whether a stick is a stick or is a snake. It's a very crude example, but I thought this is the right example to give. So you, so that's the that's the role of your mind at any point of time. To, dis to differentiate, to identify and create a differentiation. Otherwise, you will get into a danger or you will get into a problem. So that's the mind. So then your explicit knowledge and tacit knowledge, I will not go into that, but that's basically what you can acquire as a knowledge and what you can skills as a knowledge. Brain, again, the conceptually brain is your left brain and right brain. We know all this <clears throat> very well. Left brain is a logical brain, sequential, rational, analytical. So which is what uh, is also called the slow brain. Right brain is random, which is your intuitive or intuitional brain. So that's the left and right brain theory. And uh, there is a concept called uh, thought system one and two. So thought system one and two is a creation of a, a great uh, economist and psychologist, uh, human judgment sci scientist, I would say. Nobel Prize winner, guy named Daniel Kahneman. So he came out with a system called that human mind or uh, intuition has got two thought systems which arise spontaneously without a conscious reasoning. He called one system as a system one, which is a fast and intuitive, and second system is called slower and relies on reasoning. So system one is fast, we use 90% of time. We just see something and take the decision, right? We don't think. When you are driving the car, you just sit in the car and start driving the car. You don't think of oh, where I have to go, how I have to go. No, it just happens, right? That's a fast and intuitive system. Slow system when you want to buy a property, you do analysis, but then you take intuitive decision or you want to invest in the shares, you do data analysis. That's system two. But again, when you take a call, you may not use this. So system one and system two is a very famous uh, area in the world and a lot of management decision makers use it. There's a famous book called Thinking Fast and Thinking Slow. Uh, you can please refer to this book. Uh, it's available everywhere. Uh, it very nicely defines how human beings think. Laterality in the brain. That's another area of interest, which obviously brain is a huge topic and may not permit me a time wise, but uh, just we have differentiation in brain. Every single area is pre-identified who is supposed to do what and they don't interact and overreact with each other. Color identification, music, rhythm, logic, analysis. There are different neurons, different connecting systems. And our brain has got 86 billion neurons. And brain can contain a data which is three times thousand terabyte data. Three, thousand, three times thousand terabyte. Rohit has already started making the calculation intuitively. What is three times 1000 terabytes? Because he is a technology guy, right? He understands it quite well. So that's the brain. So we'll not get into, but please have a look at this. These are very interesting stuff uh, we should know. And there's another interesting concept called phantom syndrome. Phantom syndrome is used by doctors. So what is phantom syndrome in phantom syndrome? Basically, when there is a surgery done in a patient on a patient and his one limb and leg, something is cut down permanently. Even after that part of the body is removed, brain doesn't know that it has happened like and the patient or the person gets a pain in a part of the body which is already amputated. It all happens because of theory or practice like intuition. And all doctors agree there's a huge study and research on that. So what they do, they go and show that patient the mirror. See, you don't have. So when brain thinks you have full body, full body. 
and starts giving signals to you like that. But in real life, you don't have full body, your leg is cut. So they go in and show him the mirror to the patient and then slowly, slowly uh, it, it goes out. So this is a very famous uh, theory of uh, phantom syndrome in psychology in medical sciences. Let's see heuristics. Heuristics is a basically a, a sort of intuition, but not intuition. It's a shortcut to the uh, decision making or we call it rule of thumbs. A bit normally, for example, you are going from one road to another road, suddenly you find a shortcut, right? Or there's a water in the road, so you take a diversion and you get a shortcut. Then every time you keep getting that shortcut. But every time there may not be water on the road. First you took a decision, but that became a rule in your mind and you followed that rule unknowingly. So heuristics can go wrong. That's the basic problem of heuristics uh, as compared to intuition. For example, we, we remember things by shortcuts, right? Weep jaw. Weep jaw means color, violet and all those things. We, we have a tendency of remembering things. So that is the heuristics. Uh, then there are four types of heuristics, availability heuristics, anchoring heuristics, and then you have satisficing heuristics and representative heuristics. Let's take one example of satisficing heuristics. Basically, when we go for a shopping or our um, uh, ladies go for shopping on the linking road on Bandra, they want to buy some purse. They will not satisfy unless they go to four, five, six shops and identify what is the price in each shop. And ultimately, they may buy from the first shop, but they will satisfy themselves that I did a fantastic job. That's called satisfying heuristic. It happens availability. What comes? So when you see a TV advertisement, immediately you recall that. Or when you go to a Google search, or you do a Google search on intuition, the first article which comes on the Google search, you think that is the best article. That's called anchoring heuristics. So I have written an article on heuristics uh, in our magazine, which was released today. So maybe you go in detail, study that article on heuristic. It's very interesting article you will write. Bounded rationality. When we all take a decision, there are three limiting factors for every single human being for every single decision making process. It's called um, bounded rationality. It's by again a Nobel Prize winner, again an economist called Herbert A. Simon. And he came out with a, a theory called bounded rationality. And he said that at any point of time, when you take a decision, you are restricted by three things. You can even think now in your mind, available information, time constraint on your hand. So now on my hand is a time constraint. I have to finish in time, right? time constraint in your hand. Cognitive limitations, thinking process, how much you can think. There's a limit to that. Also, that's called bounded rationality. Another very interesting, I spoke to some very high level surgeons, doctors in US and India, how they see intuition in their practical life. And there's a concept called etoxamy, E-T-O-C-S-M-I, it's an acronym. Uh, e stands for emotion, thoughts, orientation, consciousness, sensorium, memory, intelligence. So they also say that when a patient is very serious, even if he is on a deathbed, they know that intuitively, or there are certain things which go beyond a doctor's uh, uh, medication or doctor's treatment, and he may come out of that problem. So these are the things. This is how, if you read it carefully and go through this, this takes you more towards intuition. Eight habits of the highly intuitive people. Listen to your inner voice. Practice mindfulness. You know what is mindfulness, but self-awareness and meditation. Have a creative outlet. This is very, very important. You must have a creative outlet where you enjoy music, dance, art form, giving a lecture or cooking food in the kitchen. So you should have a, a creative outlet. All intuitive people uh, have the creative outlet. Pay attention to dreams and subtle messages. Observe immediate environment and what's happening outside you and connect. Empathy. Read mind of people. Right? Enjoy solitude. This is very important. Quiet corner, me time, sit to yourself, talk to yourself. We don't do this. We are very transactional in our life. We want to achieve every time something, something, something. Result, result, result. No, sit in a corner, think. Don't overwork yourself. That's also very important. So no negativity comes in. So intuitive people practice and follow their creative endeavors. Very, very important. Okay, what are the limits of intuition? Again, there is a hindsight bias. There is overconfidence bias and there is a confirmation bias. So a very classic example of hindsight bias is Sachin Tendulkar is playing and he gets out for 50 runs. You are very worried. No hundred, no century. And then we say, oh, by the way, I knew this is going to happen today. That's called hindsight bias. You didn't know. After the event has happened, you are telling you it's going to happen. That's called hindsight bias. Overconfidence bias. This is again a problem to all of us. Right? I mean, with due respect, 
you go in a foreign country and start driving a car without having the road maps and you are confident i will find out my roads and you don't over confidence confirmation bias very classic example we have something in our mind which is confirmation like for example left handed people are more creative than right handed people may not be right so this is called confirmation bias intuition quotes by experts many people have given very many quotes on intuition they are very interesting please go through please read and there are thousands of such quotes available on the google benefits of intuition helps you in effective decision making helps you to solve complex problems it helps you to create your true mission and sense and purpose it can tweak your approach it can caution you the risk intuition helps you to step out of your comfort zone and very important is intuition improves your mental well being summary and take away hopefully this is my last slide yes this is my last slide last one or two practice intuition in real life develop the habit of listening to your inner voice use intuition in decision making personal as well as professional life natural power to empower you don't forget that and it helps society at large our mythology has got enough examples of intuition i don't want to explain you all those things intuitive wisdom is natural or cultural to india this is a question i want you to reflect upon and think upon but we have that tip of iceberg go in your mind go below water go under water start snorkeling start scuba diving see what is there what is sitting there and that's the final so i i think with this i have tried to cover as much as possible on a topic very complex topic of intuition and i don't know how much i have been able to help you to learn and understand but ultimately i thought this is the right way to express my thoughts sensation expression interpretation which is what is intuition so this monkey is not knowing ultimately sunil has said so many things whether it was logic or whether it was a dead fish